Welcome back, everyone. We had dropped frames when I started streaming, and I don't understand why. Hopefully, it will sort itself out. All right, we're editing the scene at the moment, and uh, hopefully, we'll be good to go. All right, welcome, everyone. I think you probably heard me, my introduction there. Weird Wednesday, we're playing unusual openings and whatnot. Um, I was briefly talking about Weekend Zay. There was one decisive game yesterday, probably like one of the few days when there's only been one decisive game. Van Veli bites the dust against Carlsen. He's kind of a punching bag at this point. I don't think he'll be playing anymore in this event after this year. Where's our moderator, Mr. Yeroon? probably be along shortly so I decided to go with with the hippo we're playing the hippo and uh, this particular move order I mentioned several times <laughs> I don't know if it was a real game or what but it actually g6 and bishop g7 actually goes back to uh, to the Italians analysis Greco this was actually analyzed according to Put in my chess base, there was analysis going back to 1620 on this variation. Believe it or not, the double fianchetto analyzed all those years ago. Queen d2. So I don't want to ever let him play bishop h6. That's one of the cardinal rules in the hippo, um, not to allow that, that type of stuff. Try to get on with the queen side. If he plays h4, we play h6. Keep my fingers crossed here that the stream will be good. I was getting dropped frames despite a very low frame per second setting, which is quite difficult to understand. You guys can see the you guys can see the moves now. So, classic hippo. The hippo is very hard hard to play against. I actually, I took out Alexander Onishuk once in a hippo. Um, but. Some kind of cheating. I mean, it's not really an Owens defense here. It's more familiar to me. I get this a lot out of... I used to get this a lot out of the English defense. So the C4 or D4, E6, followed by B6. And then I'd later play G6. You can, you can play G6 on move one. Transfer to the hippo. I've seen people later play like King F8, King G8, but black really needs to be... He really needs to be um, thoughtful about the king position. It might remain in the center, it might go queenside. Lavalanchula playing quickly h5 and knight h2. Looks like he wants to try to open the position over there. I mean, obviously b5 makes some sense here. c5. C5 also, though he's trying to play F4, possibly Knight G4. Open the position to his favor. If I played C5, I wouldn't really have a concrete threat, I guess. You can also play B5. b5 followed by c5 b5 c5 take with the knight i think he's coming with f4 with f4 on horizon i'm afraid to weaken d5 why not e5 um it would make a huge hole on f5 and also give him potential threats against f7 
Now he played f3, so I can try for c5, but I might be dropping my d6 pawn. So I'm going to play this play this a little differently. It's a fast game, five minutes with five second increment. I don't know, c5, d takes c5, knight takes c5. I'd have to sacrifice a pawn there, and I I guess it might have been okay to do c5 and then take with a pawn. Yeah, come to think of it, come to think of it, I mean, c5 may have been strong. Threatening c4. Take back with a pawn. And I don't see any tactics for him there. So I, I should have... No, my pawn was... Yeah... I should have played c5. That was better. Now he plays d5, and this is attacked a bazillion times, but it's defended a million times. Um, I do have b4, then knight a4. But it seems counterintuitive to play d5 for white, opening my bishop on g7, but he can play bishop, bishop d4 at some point. It's also threatening bishop takes b6. Maybe that's his idea. Okay. <clears throat> e5 now may be necessary. It's really ugly. Bishop takes c3 followed by e5. These huge holes in my position. Okay, I don't think bishop takes b6 is that big a threat, but d takes e is a big threat. So, we do need to deal with that. B4. If only I'd had time to play queen d7 here. I guess I can play e5, but my bishop's horrifying after that. Really not the right idea here. Take on d5. Take on d5, bishop takes d6, and then he can recapture. <clears throat> this looks like maybe I have to play knight c4. Finally found the right plan after thinking about it for like half an hour. Oh my goodness. That's got to be the best. It may still not be that great, but better than the alternatives. Oh no. I don't have too much time here. Position looks kind of dubious for black. What's this guy's rating like 1900? He's pretty strong for 1900. Most likely I'll be losing a pawn here at the very least. Position is very double-edged, but white's got to be clearly better here. He's played this extremely well. Knight h2, knight g4, this is a great maneuver. Overextending himself. But I think this decision is is debatable for him to to go with the opposite color bishops. The bishop on f6 though is gonna is gonna cause me some headaches. Maybe rook h7 was better. Probably rook h7 was best. Now it's going to be kind of awkward. With rook h7, I could take on e5. What's he doing? He's going berserk. 
Not literally going berserk. Figuratively. He's figuratively berserking. Um, not necessary to sack a piece there. You should play e5. I should have played rook h7 in the first place to be able to take on e5. And I think there white has a big positional advantage after e5 instead of sacrificing a piece. I definitely made the wrong rook move. I'm not saying this is bad for white, but it's unclear, you know, and that's not what he really wants here. Maybe not. Maybe I should castle while I can castle. He does have three connected pass pawns, but hopefully my extra piece will be able to I'll come to think of it. I can pick this pawn off. We're very fortunate he berserked. So I was I was definitely toast. Well, I mean it's not like it's over, but if he plays e5, he has such a huge positional advantage. Um, massive. Like a, like a nightmare French for black. And there I thought g5, maybe. If he plays king d2, rook takes g5, followed by knight f3 check. Okay, Lavantula. Sorry, man. That was much, much better for white. Um, Suvik is white. How's the stream, guys? It's holding up. Yeah, e5 would have stopped f4, but my big mistake at the, at the end there was... My big mistake was to play rook f8 instead of rook h7 because then if he plays e5, I can play something like knight takes e5 and my queen is protected on d7. Unusual opening. Stop myself here. Um, what if we play knight c6? I'm going to play, now I play d6 a lot, but I want to try to play something I don't normally play, so. <clears throat> the Monkey D Bill says the double fianchetto with two knights in the middle is the way to beat Stockfish by flagging in a 30 second bullet. Um, well, that's an old recipe. You know, it's the way to beat humans, too. <laughs> um, <laughs> kind of coughing. Um, had a long walk in the cold air yesterday. But um, it's like freezing brutally here for those of you who aren't in Europe. It's um, it's just a good way of flagging anybody, not just stockfish. But the uh, the thing is called a, it's called a hippopotamus if you want to give it a name. One of my favorite setups, by the way. Okay, d5 would lead to a to a very strange version of the center counter. So. What can we do here? <clears throat> I should play the French, but that's not an unusual opening. I just never play the French, so for me it would be an unusual opening. What if we played f5 here? It's a little bit, I think this is just too crappy to like, consider it to be like a real opening. Um, Shirazi does that. Just, that's a little bit too stupid. Let's play g6. Normally I would play d6. 
It's funny how many people play knight f3 rather than d4, which is clearly the critical move. <clears throat> Nimzovich. Yeah, a lot of people call it the Nimzovich. I think that's the established name. It doesn't really have uh, another name, I guess. So, anyway, welcome everybody. Hopefully the stream will, will be good. We were getting dropped frames when I started. I'm sorry the camera speed is so slow, but I don't think that watching me in motion is so important. Um, we're just lucky that the stream is working. So, if the audio is good and the board is up to date, we're in good shape. Well, what's happening in Weekend's Day? So Magnus won against Luke Van Welle, kind of a foregone conclusion. I feel really bad for Van Welle. It's like, you know, when you get beat down that bad, you just kind of stop playing your best. Um, you know, he, he doesn't even know where he is. It's like a punch drunk boxer or something. Um, you lose all your self-confidence. I mean, very, very quickly. So... This game against Carlson yesterday, it wasn't really great. It looks like something Carlson had kind of cooked up. Non-threatening sort of variation, although it was a curious attack. That I kind of have to question, you know, like from Van Welle, I mean, is really allowing the curious attack the best way to handle Magnus Carlson? Um, just allowing it at all against anybody, is that really a good idea? So. I thought we had a game earlier, Subic, where you did something like bishop b5, but maybe that was... I thought it was against you, but I'm not sure. In a similar position. Bishop b5. No? Wasn't that a game we had, like, last week, where you did bishop b5, doubled my pawns, and you had a good game? This is kind of morphed into... kind of like Kali system against the modern. Most likely this position would be reached by e4, g6, d4, bishop g7, c3. Very solid variation, c3 against the modern defense. <clears throat> Here I probably could have tried knight to g4, but that might induce me to like have to play h6 and g5. The stream is exactly 15 seconds delayed. Thank you for the precise calculation. Um, so Zanchess, welcome everybody. AK, AJK, Tom. It's Wacky Wednesday, so we do play unusual openings. Um, <clears throat> the first game I played the Owens defense, but turned it into a hippopotamus. And now in the second game, I, uh, I started with the Nimzovich defense. But in both cases, um, we're not really in a pure sense of the opening that we, we started out to play. Um, so what else is up, guys? On Sundays, I do a simul here on Lee Chess every week, 20 players. Sometimes I do 25 players, but um, I'm going to be playing on Sundays, so usually I'm a little bit tired. Keep it down to 20. D5 from Suvik now. This is unusual. You don't normally want to do this because you're playing the King's Indian um, or King's Indian-like position with the pawn on C3. And I think that typically these pawns are kind of like out of sync for lack of a better way to put it. He might have to play c4 to support the center, then his knight is on the wrong square, or it belongs on c3. So, although d5 is playable, you're giving up the, um, you're giving up the um, tension rather early. Knight b8 is kind of passive here, although it's, it's okay. Um, it's kind of a dilemma because on e7 the knight oftentimes has troubles getting into the center, but it is a King's Indian, essentially. Should be a fairly good King's Indian for black. It a little bit reminds one of like the Roy Lopez or something where this bishop retreated back from b5 to d3. It's always hard for me because although I'm like a lifetime, almost a lifetime King's Indian player, I probably started playing the King's Indian when I was about 1900. Um, I don't really like the Mar del Plata variation for black. 
which is like the, the main line where you play knight c6 and knight e7. Although I played it, um, it feels like the game is playing you, like you're not playing the game. That's why I gave up playing the Mardel Plata variation. Uh oh, I've got a low disk space warning. That's why I'm having trouble with the. That's why I'm having trouble with the. Um, I don't understand why I have this low disk space warning. I didn't end, add any programs or anything lately. But I did have this once before. That's why I had a problem with the stream, guys. I'm going to have to um, delete some programs from the computer or something. So C4. Um, was it against you, Suvik, who I did this similar kind of break, like C6 and B5 once? In a stream not so long ago? In a galaxy not that far away? But here we have a serious alternative. Because I think in the other game, this wasn't available. Um, a little more natural to play for this break with F5 than playing C6. And I had another game against somebody not that long ago where I had to do like C6 and B5. And it got really hairy because I'm, speaking of Nimzovich, I'm attacking the front or the 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 face or the uh, the head of his pawn chain rather than it's like a mountain <laughs> it looks like a mountain the face of his his pawn chain here with c6 and b5 it's kind of positionally anti-positional um will you be streaming the tata tournament no no um i just commentate you know about what's what's happened there a little bit so queenie two yeah, I don't need to take this guy right away. I mean, I think that white should really play a bishop g5. Um, he ought to play bishop g5. Pres try to preserve that bishop, or at least make me pay some kind of toll for getting it. But it's not that bad. Um... Yeah, I don't normally stream, like, tournament coverage. That takes a lot of time. Back in the day, I used to work on ICC as a commentator. And um, this is, like, 10 years ago. So we um, we did a lot of tournament coverage. But it takes, like, we would be doing it for, like, five or six hours. Um, that's a serious time commitment. Knight takes e3. Yeah, that was one of the best tournaments of the year where we would do live coverage of Weekend Zay. So he took with the pawn, which most people are terrified to do. I like this recapture. Increases your control of the center a little bit. Um, the dark squared bishop is going to be kind of a tricky piece. I think we play f5 here. But he's not committed his king, so this is something that we have to think about. We're running out of time, but we really ought to start thinking in terms of not just kingside attack here, but general plans about if he castles queenside. If he castles queenside, how are we going to handle that? <clears throat> and should I play f5 or not? Maybe f5 is a good idea in any case. To get it in before he gets like g4 or something. If he was to play g4, my life might become very difficult as far as ever playing f5. I could wait a move, like for him to play something like h3, perhaps. So now I guess the plan is to go after his king on the queen side. We could play c5, we could play c6, but I have to watch out for a knight g5 in some positions. c5 is kind of like a Kasparov, same as King's Indian plan. Gives you a grip in the center, and, um, and the plan is to play b5. I mean, if we get in b5, white is now castle queenside in the Benoni, which in general is not really a good idea. I think that c6 was equally interesting. 
our dark square bishop is hoping that um, hoping that things might turn out so that it plays a useful role but I don't know I mean I, I started to get low on time maybe c6 would have been more fluid a little more fluid now he does h3 but we got the break on the queen side. This, this is pretty hard to deal with. You, you know, I might just sacrifice a pawn. Yeah, now he's forcing my hand. Um, probably have to play f4 to keep the lines closed. Or not. Well, he's offering to sacrifice a pawn here. Take, take, take. There was a great game in the B tournament, of course, yesterday. <laughs> By the way, guys, if you want to check this out, um, Smirin is now tied for first, and he played a fantastic game against, um, what's his name? The kid, Jordan Van Forest. Smirin is, is the middle-aged monster. Um, he's uh, played a great game yesterday. I don't know how far he had uh, prepared this, like, Peart's theory, but White came up like way too short. <laughs> he tried to throw everything at Smirin, but the kitchen sink and Smirin just had everything prepared and, and like ready and he just defended and hosed the guy. Um, but this was this is the kind of pawn sacrifice here that I think it's dangerous to take. I might not be inclined to do that if uh, If I didn't have such good prospects on the queen side, you know, but um, since I have great prospects to attack him on the queen side with b5, I would think this this is a safe answer. And I should mention that um, anyone like, you know, th contemplating knight g5, you have to watch out for knight takes d5. Okay, maybe just nothing fancy here. Um, Routine development. B5. Yeah, you can sack a pawn. Um, I could have played it right there. B5 was fine for me last move. I, I think he shouldn't react if he can help it, you know. Um, there are going to be some interesting tactical possibilities coming up. King b2, it's an interesting diagonal. I guess we just go for it here. We have knight takes d5 ideas. An a4, maybe. We're kind of holding this in reserve, this capturing here. Although the F file is also, the F file is also a serious threat. It is hard to break through. Maybe B four. You have such a massive space advantage on both sides. <laughs> um, a little bit reminds me how I lost to Magnus Carlsen. It was just that the pawn flanks was, was pushed up like one more. <laughs> I had a pawn flanks like h2 through e5 and he, he squeezed me on both sides. Pawn phalanx. Pawn phalanxes. Sufik has managed to keep the position closed, but it's not really enough, I don't think. Although I'd rather have the queen not in front 
front loaded the front loaded queen probably not ideal Now I thought you would take with the knight there This may prove difficult. May prove difficult to break through. Extremely low on time. Where's constant change? Um, <clears throat> he's going to kick me out. Now we're going to need to open the other side. My knight is the problem here. H4. Sorry guys, I'm just too short of time to really say much of anything. I need to watch the uh, the H file and the F file. Oh, this is not so easy. Two entry points for white on F6. But I thought there he had a better plan. He had a better plan of knight to g4. Alright, don't panic. I thought he should try knight f5 check for better or for worse, Suvik. Sacrifice a piece there to create some complications. All right, it ended up being in my favor, but I mean, I think even just a few moves ago, this is like one possibility. Here, you could play knight f5 check. Knight f5 check, pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, rook f8, f6, I have to sacrifice a piece back. Knight takes, pawn takes, rook takes. That's probably still winning for black, but it's it's very complicated. Um, Mule Skinner is up next. Kazim versus Naka, wonderful match. Was that, oh, you guys are talking about what? A oh, match. Oh, you're talking about this, oh, this game? Um, well, you know, it was, it was reasonable for a while, and then once Nakamura had a knight on c6, it looked pretty much over. Um, Mule Skinner, we've got to, uh, play something unusual. I'm sorry, I played c5 without thinking, guys, so here we can try something 
out of the ordinary against Mule Skinner. I forgot it was Weird Wednesday. I played C5. But we can revert to uh, an alternative type of setup. Let's play B6. You're talking about Kazin Gulamali versus Nakamura from the Gibraltar, Gibraltar Chess Festival. I was disappointed because I wanted to play in Gibraltar and I had a friend who was in Cuba and he was supposed to contact me if um, if Stuart Conquest and the organizers had had an open place and then he said he couldn't contact me for some reason and, and we didn't get to play at the last minute but I wanted to play in Gibraltar. Um, okay, Knight F3. Mule Skinner is a player who really likes closed formations. He nearly beat me yesterday in a closed Sicilian, so... We could play... Well, let's let's continue the theme here today. Hippopotamus against everything. Um, Dinara... Or Dinura... I mean, I don't think there was any point where... Nakamura didn't have that game under control, and it was kind of ugly at the end where Gulamali just lost the exchange for nothing. Um, I didn't analyze the game in great detail, honestly. I just thought, well, somewhat normal opening. Um, Nakamura played interestingly to allow black to exchange on c3, and then he took on double isolated pawns with white, but he's so dynamic that um, as soon as the position started to get sharp, Black fell apart. Okay, so I think if I had played in, ironically, I was looking at the pairings, people. If I had played in in um, Gibraltar, I would have made the cut by like one board. I probably would have played bottom board or something like that. I would have missed playing like the number one seed by. I, I would have missed Caruana by like, well, maybe my, by more than one though, because I think there's some kind of strange like accelerated pairings in place um, something weird like there was a 2330 on top board and a 2370 somewhere later um, but anyway I wouldn't have gotten I wouldn't have gotten paired up like to one of the top players in the first round which uh, which is fortunate I would have liked that so I would have been disappointed if I saw that I would have been paired with like Caruana in round one or something um, Okay, here, we try to keep a fluid position, but I, I'm not sure. Maybe I should just play knight c6 here, bear down on d4. How's the weather there? It's always cold, man. It's like there's a European super freeze. I've never been this cold in, in, in Hungary, um, it, but it's not just Hungary. And the whole, whole of Europe is like, most of Europe is extremely frozen. Um, it's just like ice on the ground, and, and you um, there's no snow or precipitation of any kind. But uh, you just like slip and slide everywhere you go. You can play um, ice hockey on the on the grass, basically. Bishop G two. Um, I, it's never been this cold in the fourteen years that I've been living here. I don't remember it being like negative ten for weeks at a time. Maybe it's not that cold now, but it was at one point. So at this point, how do I develop my pieces? Um, all right, d6 <clears throat> looks fluid. You have to watch out for stuff like e5. Yesterday I had a kind of semi-similar setup. Um, I played against... Yeah, um, against Zenchess, right? That I tried to do... I tried to do uh, against the Grand Prix also, but that was a bishop b5 variation where he traded his white square bishop on c6. I tried to wait. By the way, Zenchess, looking at that game in retrospect, it looks like castling queenside was too much. I should try to castle kingside. What I didn't realize was like, I thought you had a strong attack immediately if I castle kingside. And uh, it was actually very okay for black, probably equal. Complicated though. You could try to sacrifice a pawn with f5 and things would have been sharp. Maybe another time. 
How about my knight here on f6? If I play queen d7, I'm a little bit worried about white playing something there. No, he can't play e5, though. Super Potser. It's really cold. Um, Zenchess says, I was actually plus two according to Ripka or whatever, but I lost. What are you talking about? Oh, you played Magnus and ICC Simul. Wow, when he was like 15. I had... Yeah, I always talk about my game against Magnus where... I was the only player who almost drew him in a rapid tournament, but he went ended up beating me and going 7-0. and And there was another... G, there was a GM or two in that. Um, I did much better than the other the, the two GMs who played him. They were just like crushed. I almost drew a queen ending. Seven pawns against seven pawns. But I... He's just too fast. I was... I was probably holding on, but it was complicated, you know, like queen ending with seven pawns on the board. He had two, like, dual pawn breaks on both sides against my pawn phalanx, and, and like, I had, like, one minute against three, so he just basically played too fast for me to, to defend. Um, he's always been that way, you know, he's extremely good in technique and very very fast which makes him kind of optimal for today's like 90 minute um, 40 moves time controls I think that the Magnus style is is uh, is extremely practical for the the current trend DST I just bubble from a poker tournament I got King King did not raise a lady it's always a lady with DST what is it with that man why are you always playing against ladies in your poker tournaments? That's, um, mm hmm It wasn't raised, and you had a set of kings. What? Go all in, she shows pocket tens, turns over a set. What? Set over set, turn ten. Oh my god. <clears throat> That's amazing. So F5. You know, this is interesting. It looks like I have inability to take on F5. I cannot take this pawn. I mean, even if I took it and could take it, it would still be kind of complicated. Unless you have some really big sacrifice in mind here. He's going to take on f7 and win the exchange on h8. I mean, I can't imagine how I can take with the queen. I can take with the queen in any way. He could even play like bishop h3 or something. So I think taking the pawn is out of the question on f5. We could just take the pawn. Um, if he recaptures, then ignore it. Then, then we ask ourselves the question, is bishop h3 the idea? That could be a problem. But bishop h3 could be a problem no matter what. So, I don't think that bishop h3 is that, that bad, maybe. Maybe we should take on f5. I'm not, I'm not sure I should recapture on f5, though. That looks too dangerous. Knight g5. Now, I'm not so afraid of bishop h3. I mean, if bishop h3, you know what? You take on f5, I'll play e6, and, and life is easy. It's not that bad. He has other possibilities, which are very complicated too. But anyway, I think I think taking on f5, since I'm not committed to castling kingside here, um, I'll explain why I decided to do this. It's like if I don't, then bishop h3 looks like a really nasty problem. Here, I don't bind it as much because if you take. If you take on f5, I play e6. What about knight g5? Then I'm playing knight h6, right? To mention knight d4 being an interesting possibility. Um, this doesn't develop any pieces, does it? That's the only thing I don't like about this possibility. Um, 
But nevertheless, opens up my bishop on b7. It is kind of like developing a piece, right? It's, it's a way of developing. Knight d5 doesn't threaten anything. So I'm not I'm not that convinced that black has any issues here. There is my king in the center. Um, sorry about that DST. It seems like that happens a lot, doesn't it? The quads. But you're talking about a live poker tournament, I assumed. You're not talking about something online. Um, Knight d4. And knight g5. Okay. Well, this knight is sort of like maybe coming to d5 or something. I can always kick it out. Actually, here he has queen h5. So I'm not certain whether I should play knight h6. Maybe... In retrospect, it's better to play knight f6. As strange as that might seem, but f7. But actually, what's going on here? I mean, your knight g5, now I can play h6. You're not actually threatening anything. A piece sack on f7? Are you going to sack a piece on f7 and, and play queen h5 check and checkmate me or something? Is that really for real? It's kind of hard to believe. Um... I don't see it. it. It does look a bit dangerous, but it seems like I have defense here. I, I don't know. I mean, I have, just sticking a knight on f6 will stop all your threats on the f-file. So I think this is kind of a bluff. Um, well, I don't think so. I don't believe this. It's all nice to throw your queen out there and look aggressive, but... I'm not really seeing this. How does this work? I've got massive defense of f6. Like, there's no way you're going to get through that point on f6. And h6 is protected. Most of my pieces are developed. Um, so I, I don't know, man. I mean, it smells like a bluff. can't fear the ghosts yeah I know DST tournaments are so horrible to play for hours that's why I used to play like 15 or 20 tables online now yeah I mean of course it's horrible I went to Prague I played nine events I cashed in four and won negative 2,000 euros so tournaments are brutal very very hard psychologically I mean, I only quit, like, playing online last year, but to be honest, I mean, I must have, like, wanted to quit, like, 20 times in the last 10 years, you know. Um, it's very, very hard psychologically to play poker tournaments. You, like, don't win for months, and you just, like, hate yourself, and, and one of the reasons why I stopped playing was the emotional roller coaster of it. Um, then you're, like, angry all the time now I just play for fun and it's much easier <laughs> I mean not for fun but when I play in a live tournament it's just like okay whatever happens happens I'm not gonna like get angry about it um, King f8 I don't see any way for white to really break me down you know there's no way to get it f7. So I think he just bluffed bluffed himself out of the pot. The paper tigers. This is nothing here. This is not relevant. Um, well, that's gone. And then we just play knight f6 and white resigns. That's my analysis. Anyway. We might even be able to 
manually castle queen side. Um, tricks are for kids, right? I feel like I should be able to trap his rook or something. Um, e6. I don't see it. I guess there's a lot of ways to skin a rabbit or it's cat right cats skinning cats doesn't sound very appetizing this doesn't look good for him Running out of ammo. Okay. Hunt the King is up next. Guys, make sure you challenge me to something between 5 and 8 minutes with a small increment. It's a weird Wednesday, so I'm trying to play unusual openings. Constant Change busted out the 10-0 challenge. He hasn't been around for a while. He just corrected that. Okay. 10-0, actually, I've been playing classical. I've been playing the classical tournaments here on Lee Chess. Um, all right. Now, against C4 back, uh, Hunt the King... Um, yeah, that's hard to play something unusual, but I had an idea about this. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's try something really stupid. C4, D5. Oh, he instantly took. He knows this. Let's see how he reacts. Ah. Knight, F3. Yes. So far, so good, Hunt the King. So why is c4d5 bad? Why is c4d5 bad for black? Now this one is not my personal preference, the e4. I think you should play d4 there. I've given this speech a lot of times to my students. And I think d4 is the, the refutation of this, this opening. It actually is a martial variation. So like d4, d5, excuse me, yeah, excuse me, d4, knight f6, c4, d5. That's what I'm trying to say. This, What this transposes to. And this is why you shouldn't play d5 against c4. But I thought we'll play something, um, you know, a little bit offbeat to confuse Hunt the King. And I guess the martial defense isn't unplayable. Now, knight c3. Of course, the idea is here d4 is impossible so knight c3 this i suppose transposes to something else I feel like I have to play c5, but it is it is slightly risky for black. But I don't know what else you can possibly play here. Can this transpose to like a queen's gambit accepted or something? Three e4 was possible. Of course, three e4 is possible. That's that's another interesting another interesting possibility. Right. It's good that you pointed that out. 
This is a very important line, e4, knight takes e4, queen a4, check, winning a piece. So after e4, we play c6 here. And it seems like black gets some compensation there. But I'm not an expert. There should be some compensation. So this seems to be a transposition. Another interesting game yesterday from the weekend day was looks like Aronian swallowed a Zoltan Ribley analysis or something. He played the uh, he he played the um, what's it called? Uh, I can't remember what it's called. It's a variation of the. Um, the Queen's Gambit declined, Rogozin. My memory is failing, but Hungarian Grandmaster Zoltan Ribley, who's a former candidate, he's basically this opening that yesterday Aronian played with Black Aronian. Uh, Zoltan Ribley has like analyzed that out to like a draw in 37 moves, like 17 different variations. Um, what was it? So versus Aronian. What is it? Oh, the Vienna variation. That's it. The Vienna variation. Ironically, Zoltan Ribley is the trainer for the Austrian team. Maybe because he's an expert in the Vienna variation, I don't know. If that's the exact reason or not, but... Um, is e5? Am I supposed to play e5 here? I wish I, I, wish I knew this. Um, I feel like I'm supposed to play e5. But then bishop b5 check, or what? The problem is bishop b5 check, I guess, if I do that. Wish I knew the theory here. It does look like an open Sicilian. You're thinking of Aronian versus Geary. No, no, yesterday, so versus Aronian. So play d4. I really like so playing e4. You know, I don't know. It, everybody's got to kind of balance it out, you know, so you're not predictable. But Wesley's really good with e4, it, it seems to me. You know, he's an awesome e4 player. So playing the white side of the the Vienna was one of these, like, forced draws and 37 moves type of things. Aronia's still lurking there in the tournament. I mean, he could surge, but he'll probably end up, like, near the top rather than winning it. Um, I mean, a6 kind of has to be a good move here. e6. It does look like a Sicilian, doesn't it, guys? I could even play knight to c6, honestly. That's got to be slightly better for white, though. Because he would lose his castling rights if he decides to play knight takes c6. <sighs> Maybe not. Um, I don't know. e5, bishop b5 check is a problem. I think a6 is okay. Keeping him off of b5. Knights and bishops are not welcome on b5. This looks like one of those positions you could get from the Rubenstein symmetrical Queen's Gambit, like d4, d5, c4, c5. Um, also Queen's Gambit accepted. But Hunt the King, you should play d4. I move four. That's the best. Not e4, but d4. When black can choose between bishop f5 and maybe g6, maybe some experimental move like c5. I don't know if black can equalize. I am destroyer, just to say hello. I had some work to do. No chess today. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Hello. Bishop f4, that looks unnatural to me. This is a strange square for the bishop. It could get hit by e5. It could play a pawn sacrifice straight away with e5, but I doubt that's sound, just to develop quickly. Um, I'm just kidding. Bishop on f4 looks weird, but I do need to develop my pieces here. 
And possibly he's threatening some sort of e5, e6 type of sacrifice. If I did, like, knight bd7, I would be concerned about that. Like, e5, e6. Yuck. So I guess I have to play e6. For lack of a better move. But I, ultimately, this square here looks strange somehow. Bishop would normally go to maybe e3, or even maybe g5. g5. That's what reminded me of, of the So Aronian game. Um, this structure not that far from, from, from that Vienna variation, so... But Hunt the King let me get away with murder in the opening. After c4, d5, you're not supposed to get an equal position for black. So, I thought this would be funny to try. It's something I always wanted to do with black, but I know it's not sound. DST, you should give me your PokerStars name so I can challenge you to heads up Omaha High Low. With fifty dollars each. Um God, I haven't played heads up I haven't played high low in a long time. The cash games where I play, nobody like not enough people want to play high low. Um You don't know my poker star's name? <laughs> Not that hard to figure out. E6. Um, knight D5. So, Wesley. We can also go to D7, but that's very passive. This is uh, probably best. Epithetos says, yay, nay, nay. Like, I haven't played heads up. I haven't played high low in, in a year, probably. Um, more than that, maybe. You're talking about limit high low or pot limit high low? I have a friend who's kind of a specialist in limit, which is kind of a rare game. Um, but I don't know if I would be competent in heads up. I mean, I'm competent, but I don't really play that game. Um, okay, knight to d5. I play, but I'm not like, I don't know it that well. Knight to d5. This looks good for black. e5 pawn is a bit overextended. Now he's wasting time. The e5 pawn. <sighs> Bishop, bishop c5, developing with tempo. Choosing my moves at random. No, just kidding. Um, much more active than, say, going to, like, e7. Black does need to get developed here. f2 could be a weakness. But 94 is the answer. So, Wesley, we have a problem. I cannot play queen b6 because of 94. I mean, I could play it, but it's bad. So I have to exchange knights on c3, which is gross. Um, hard to believe that black has an advantage here. White has so much space. So much space. Now he could get really aggressive, like queen a4 check, losing a tempo to place his queen along the fourth rank on h4, but that's probably too dangerous. I mean, I don't know. Do you really want to do that? White's better off playing a normal, probably better off playing a normal developing move.
how many hours usually is the Wednesday stream? Wednesday stream is every every weekday stream. I'm streaming from like ten o'clock to twelve thirty. So all my all my weekday streams are two and a half hours. Sometimes it goes a little bit over. But Wednesday's a really 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 tough day for me. Um, I think this was probably best. Although Queen D two might be okay. Maybe Queen D two. Although ultimately then he's he's got problems with the. Uh, He's got problems with the D8, D8 rook or something like that. Well, for better or for worse, we're going to get one of your bishops. And white ends up a little bit overextended. And that's why... Really, he belonged on e2, but he couldn't block his. He couldn't afford to block his bishop on f1. That's what I was exploiting there. Feels like White should have been okay, and he still might be okay. But Queen takes or Bishop takes. I'm not sure it really makes a whole lot of difference. Either way, he loses his right to castle or not. I didn't think he could do this. That looks pretty dangerous. I would prefer king e2 or maybe king f1. Clinging to the hope of castling, maybe you're right. Double attack. Where is my double attack? <clears throat> I didn't think he'd get away with this. Queen a5. Looks really... Really difficult for white. I hate moving the same piece twice again. My inclination was to play bishop d7, but then he could castle and probably survive. So instead, I'm putting pressure on the e5 pawn while pinning the d2. That's a good arrow. Pinning the d2 knight, putting pressure on e5. You're not threatening anything. Just wanted to let you know. Um, well, we're just winning a pawn. That's probably good enough. I could have just played bishop d7 as well because he's not threatening a takes b. Or maybe he is, um, <laughs> if his rook was protected on h1. But if he actually had the rook protected, he could trap my queen on a1 and a2. That would be funny. If his rook was on f1, he could play a, b, queen takes a1 check, king e2, queen a2, bishop c4, and trap my queen, something like that. But... Anyway, that's neither here nor there. It's just a fantasy variation. This is rubbish. How do they deal with computer cheating? Um, what are you talking about? What are you guys talking about? Computer cheating and what? What are we talking about? Um, let's keep it simple since I'm about to lose on time. Unfortunately, he's getting away with it, just being a pawn down here. What? Why couldn't you take with the queen, hunt the king? Hunt my king. Um, why did you take with the king there? The burning questions. Now you're going to be sorry for that. What computer cheating are we talking about? I'll have to get back to the chat room in a second, guys. I've got 11 seconds left. So this looks like it's over. Hunt the king did a strange thing. He took with the king on d2. I don't understand. You're getting away there. You're just a pawn down. But 
pretty good drawing chances with this pawn distribution, just down four against three on the king side. Um, I would imagine like. Even between like top grandmasters, black would draw a fair share of those games upon down. Three against four on the king side. Two pawns each on the queen side. Um, okay, let me check out the chat now. What are you guys talking about? You could also stream poker. What? Online. Where is this? Keep losing my chat. It's very difficult to make money on that site unless you're tilted. Um, no, I, I think it's difficult to make money on that site unless you have a, a massive bankroll and you're generating $20,000 in rake every year. Um, that's my personal experience. Um, I don't know, man. I mean, online poker is so sketchy now. I used to trust it. I used to trust poker stars, but it's one of just many, like, many reasons why I don't want to play. I was thinking, like, yesterday, there are at least five good reasons why I don't, why I stopped playing online poker. Um, questionable as to whether, like, it's not manipulated, um, Benefits for like, you know, encouraging players like Have gone way down the amount of players have gone way down players have gotten better. I mean The the games have gotten faster and more random more like tilted toward gambling. There's like at least like five good reasons to to shy away from playing online poker um, I'm not gonna get into discussion whether online poker is rigged or not. I mean that's 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 a really insane topic, but it's certainly possible, and uh, that's just one of many reasons why you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna continue. But it's practically impossible to regulate it. I mean, even if it was even the sites that are like legal in the United States. I mean, Poker Stars is now in the United States. There are like legal games in New Jersey, and, and I mean, do online regulators like go and like check all the code of of every single like poker stars um you know software line of software code no I mean, regulation isn't regulation it's just like taxation you know that's all they want is money to um to put in state coffers i don't think that i don't think that any regulators of online poker in the united states have tested like the code of of different poker sites that are operating to see if if it's legitimate or not you know it's just a really really gray area i i'm i always believe that it was it was okay because my results were good but i wouldn't really trust it um but anyway there's a lot of reasons why the dynamics are just gone against playing online poker i i don't find it really worthwhile um anyway there's like five reasons for me anyway chess chess uh, is not a really profitable <laughs> Enterprise. Um, this is our take back for the guy for the for the day, guys. <clears throat> Knight takes d4. Um, take back for the day. Knight takes d4. Vasilikos, take your time, and and uh, let's play some good chess because you're capable. Of... Yesterday you played a great. Uh, you played a great. What was it? Royal Lopez Spanish with Black. I enjoyed that game and. Maybe you were even better at some point in that. That was a, a good game. But as far as like streaming poker, I mean, this you'd have to. I'd have to be playing, you know, full time to do that. I wouldn't want to like just play like once a week and do like a, a stream. Um, hello, Peter Svidler. How art thou? <laughs> what are you guys talking about? I think I missed a lot of chat. You're talking about a chess gambling site called Velocity Chess? Yo, chess gambling. Um, I remember when you could bet on Blitz. What, what was the name of the site? 
Um, oh God, it's been years ago. But I had a friend who used to do that. But he could only play Bullet, of course. Even, you know, even 15, 20 years ago. Um, what was it called? GameStop or something like that? I can't remember the name of the site. I think this is all booked now. We've been here before. I had a game against a Serbian IM. I just can't remember if I'm supposed to play Queen C7 here. Something strange about playing Queen C7, but I, I think that's the move. It does seem odd to put your queen on c7 voluntarily. Stupovsky, that was the guy's name. I had this Jdenko Stupovsky. Had a game against him in the first Saturday GM tournament um, back 10 years ago. Maybe a little bit, yeah, around 10 years ago. I'm just trying to remember, why is Queen C7 like the main line here for black? I analyzed this, probably a Zoltan Ribley analysis. <laughs> um, Queen C7, it does seem strange to allow Knight B5 voluntarily. Why not just Bishop E7? No, it's it's not Queen C7. I've made this mistake before. You know, I think I did this in a game here on Lee Chess. I had the same hallucination that I'm supposed to play Queen C7, but I'm just misremembering the variation. Of course it doesn't make sense to play Queen C7 in this position. Because if Queen C7, he's playing Knight B5 with tempo, and then I'm playing Queen B8, and then he's playing like Bishop F4, and then I have to play like Knight E5, It's still playable, but what about just bishop e7? It makes more sense to just play bishop e7. Why should I play queen c7 and give him a tempo? I had an ECO monograph about this opening by Zoltan Ribley of all people who was already discussed and uh, he's one of the best Hungarian theoreticians there is um, he's still even though he's like almost 70 he's still like close to 2600 and training the Austrian Olympic team um, really quality chess player and gentleman uh, he did a monograph on this He's a big expert in the Scheveningen, or Scheveningen, many other openings. Um, but I had a game earlier, a few months ago, where I played Queen C7. Yeah, this is book. I mean, Knight B5, Queen B8. You know, I'm not wasting a tempo here. And this is my game with Stupowski. New messages below. Yeah, DST is constantly talking about playing live poker. He lives in Australia, and I guess he has some kind of like casino nearby where he goes to. Um, Sanchez, I had a friend who could turn my twenty dollars in poker money to like four hundred. You know those people, a lot of them exist, but then they like, the next day they like lose it all <laughs> on them. Um, if not poker, something else. A4. Let's see. This has got to be one of the main lines, but I think Bishop G5 was my game with, with Stupowski. Bishop g5, a6, bishop takes f6, g takes f6. In this case, he can't force me to have like a, an isolated doubled pawn here, or rather doubled pawns on f6. And Bishop g5 is the sharpest move. Bishop f4 is a move as well, forcing black to play knight e5. But I don't see 
that being as good as bishop g5, I'm pretty sure this is um, the key line. Unlike Stupovsky, Vasilikos didn't force me to have double pawns here. Um, I don't know, is he threatening something like a5? No. Knight c4. Knight c4 is a problem. And I'm not really sure how I'm supposed to go about answering that. Queen c7. If castles knight c4, we could play, yeah, this knight c4 is going to come in and it's going to be an issue. So I think I have to take care of that now. Um, possible that this is this is still some sort of weird book. Though a4 is, is definitely not as sharp as bishop g5. The two main moves that were discussed by Ribley were bishop f4 and bishop g5. This seems reasonable for white, though, to play a4. Tournaments mathematically unprofitable and psychologically damaging to your mental health. Um, No, I mean, I think the best player is still making profit no matter what, you know, but you've got to be extremely good and extremely, like, strong psychologically and you have a lot of money, you know, so you can endure really long, really, really long um, losing periods, which is my biggest problem. One of my biggest problems, my bankroll is not, it's just not deep enough to, uh, to continue to play tournaments uh, full time. If someone wanted to donate, like, $50,000 to me, I would probably be willing to, to go back to playing poker full-time, but without at least a $50,000 bankroll, I don't think it would be worth it. I mean, there's a lot of guys playing low stakes, a lot of good low stakes players, like, who probably, like, making the same money they would make working at McDonald's. Um, although the work is, like, 10 times as hard, they're earning the same amount of money they would make at McDonald's. A lot of, like, Eastern European grinders in the micro stake poker it's like better just to work at mcdonald's and slack off um queen d3 this is an interesting move just controlling the center although he's walking into knight e5 my knight isn't very stable on that square still i think i should probably play it if he plays f4 my knight can later on go back to g6 but i want to keep his knight out of the game i think that that's the name of the game here is I thought he should have played knight c4, honestly. It, it looks weird to like put it in the air, but I don't have a discovery, a great dis discovery here. So I think you should pull the trigger on knight c4. And um, that's threatening a5. So I might have to do something drastic like knight e5. That's probably best, knight c4, knight e5. Knight takes e5, d takes e5, black's probably okay there. Those double pawns on e5 and e6 are actually pretty good in many many circumstances. If online poker is is for better players, then why is Phil Helmuth, who is 114? What's that? In person, you cannot win anything online. Um, one reason why I consider it dodgy, well, I don't know, you know, too much about how much Phil Helmuth has played or not played online so I couldn't really I couldn't really answer that um, but Phil Helmuth's reputation with online poker kind of took a hit you know when ultimate bet was was proved to be like a cheating site um, I think it's like you know he, he his reputation like kind of prevented him from from doing online poker, um, I don't know. But all I know is my personal experiences. I'm not I'm not a fan of online poker at the moment. Um, 
I don't trust it. Queen e2, yes. Threatening f4. Um, Vasilla costs after hanging a piece there in the beginning, you're, you're coming back. Um, so g g this, this f4 idea, try not to stutter too much. We could play bishop c6, and then f4, knight g4. Bishop c6 seems odd as well. I'm about to lose on time. He's got three minutes more than me. No brain, no pain, that's what I say. I kind of panicked there, though. I should have probably played rook c8. I didn't like the variation like f4, knight c4, take, 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 e5, d takes e5, bishop takes b7. But I'm probably okay there. I shouldn't dismiss that line. It would have been more logical to play rook c8. If you guys understand what I'm talking about by take, 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 I'm saying, you know, instead of castles, rook c8, f4, knight, c4, trade everything on c4, white plays e5, hitting my knight, I trade on e5, he gets an isolated pawn on e5, and then um, something like knight g4, bishop takes, bishop takes b7, when white has a three on one queenside majority and is also attacking my last remaining pawn on a6, but there I probably had all sorts of nasty counter chances. So I regret not playing rook c8. Okay, this move looks semi irrelevant. Um, fine by me. I don't know what you're doing exactly with bishop g5. I don't like that my bishop's unprotected. An f4, f4 e5 type of stuff could happen, but I'm going to play rook c8 if given the chance, as I should have before. Rook c8 looked really good. Well, I like, you know, Jennifer Tilly was like the first person to quit Poker Stars when they started introducing casino, casino games. She obviously had some sort of falling out with the new owners, so I'm sure she had a good connection with Poker Stars until the new, new ownership took over. I mean, maybe it was a moral thing about not liking casino games, but I think there was more to it than that. 20 million sounds like a lot of money for a player like her to win. I mean, she's not like an insane gambling type, you know. You would think like Patrick Antonius could win 20 million, then lose 20 million the next year, you know, but uh, Jennifer Tilly making 20 million... Um, but she won, like, a big live tournament a few years ago. One of the EPT main events. Bishop e8. Well, it looks good for black. Maybe I should have played knight g4. I don't see anything clear. Black's just better with the two bishops. My rook's protected on d8, so there's no e5. The queen side is falling apart. Another bad exchange on f6. Somebody else did that a few days ago. Um, this unprovoked exchange on f6, and I was talking about how. I was talking about how basically this is the best, you know, piece for white in the open Sicilian. Um, 
this is the white, uh, sorry, the dark squared bishop. See, even now we have a pawn on c, c2, a pawn on e4. White's pawn structure is primarily based on white squares. And then Vasilikos is just over overlooking that my my pieces are protected. So it's over. Um, but anyway, like Bishop takes f6, why why trade that guy? Your best chance was there, probably. You had a moment where you could have played f4, and I, I failed to play rook a c8 here. When I castled f4, and I have to play a somewhat lame move, like knight to g6, and I think that white is okay there. Back to basics. 7 plus 3. Epithetos, you missed the cutoff for the last game broadcast. Epithetos, did you challenge me? Um, Andy Gaming, great job. Fedor Holtz dominates every high roller event. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. There, are, you know, you talk about Phil Helmuth not doing well in, in online poker. Yeah, there, there are certain players who are really, really consistent in live poker to the point where it's almost unbelievable. But these, um, these, uh, these tournaments with the high rollers are small fields, you know, so, um, that's been recently. I mean, I don't think that people can have a lucky, a lucky year or a lucky two years, you know, you're not talking about that many events, but it is hard to believe how the same players, um, you know, consistently do so well in those high rollers. But people, you know, I mean, people are afraid, you know, it's a big buy-in. I mean, half the field is like massively rolled pro pros, and then half of them is like people who satellite it in, or they're just like rich amateurs. But they still, even the rich amateurs don't really want to lose like 50,000. So they, um, they basically play probably too tight and let these players like who are really aggressive push them push them too far too much and e3 our favorite variation against the king's indian the smislav system you need a lot of money to play poker i mean there's no question about it i wouldn't i wouldn't go back to online poker without at least fifty thousand dollars um i mean i could do it with 20 but it's not really enough. I mean, if you want to play, then you should play like the highest buy-ins possible. So an interesting approach from back to basics, knight c6 and knight b4. Definitely non-standard. Um, but I'm not going to I'm not going to condemn it and say it's it's clearly bad hyper modern and interesting honestly I'm not sure you know there's not really a lot of theory on this playing knight c6 in this type of position and and I've run into trouble I mean I would like to put my knight on d4 but I've run into trouble obviously like knight c5 I'm sorry c5 or your e5 my knight doesn't have a good retreat square um, a3 is a lazy move that probably forces him to go back to where you know he's actually better off So knight d2, shoring up e4, preventing bishop f5, and now black played a5. This is going to transpose to something kind of like a Petrosian system. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's practically a direct transposition. Um, e5 back to basics made a mistake in the in the sameish against me playing e5 with my bishop on g5 here again um slightly more appropriate i had a game with um yuri shulman that was a little bit similar to this but this is more like this is more like a trojan variation where i haven't played e4 or my pawns on e3 that could be favorable to white not playing e4 
could give me you know what what I could do I could go like Jordan Van Forest like totally had a game with um, Ivan Sokolov which was actually an Averbach but Sokolov did something mental against Van Forest like he, he did like G4 maybe that's not a bad idea I mean you could play without castling a3 and then knight a6 and maybe g4 just go totally mental and uh and play without castling but in a five minute game it's a little bit a little bit crazy you play bullet <laughs> you play bullet over the board um Andy Gaming, great job. You certainly don't need 50,000 to play online. I can play online with $100, man, but I'm talking about playing every single, like, you know, buy-in as a full-time professional. So I would play every single 200, every single 100, every single 500. Um, you need at least $50,000 if you're playing $500 buy-ins. You need at least $50,000. I'm not talking about playing $5 tournaments and $10 tournaments. I'm talking about playing, like, the highest stakes possible tournaments online, you know, and if you did that, if you're playing $500 buy-ins every week, you need to have at least $50,000. I'm not talking about, you know, working at McDonald's and playing five or $10 tournaments. I realize that that's possible, but it's just very, very like small time and, and it doesn't seem like it's even worth it. You know, a lot of grinders from, from, Eastern Europe. I mean, they're playing like five dollar tournaments, thousands of five dollar tournaments. What, what? So they earn like as much as you can earn like working at McDonald's. Um, I think it's it's better to do it like all all or nothing. You know, if you're a good player, these guys that don't move up in stakes, like they're playing ten dollar tournaments their whole life. Like, if you're a good player, you shouldn't be afraid to play the highest possible buy-ins. Um, so I, I wouldn't want to go back to it unless I was like playing serious tournaments. That's why I say to have a bankroll of at least fifty thousand dollars. That would be the minimum. If you're playing if you're playing online, you're playing multiple tables at the same time. Um a hundred buy ins is like definitely the minimum. And you can have swings of two hundred, three hundred buy ins. I mean it's it's totally if you're playing tournament poker online as I did um full time it's not unusual to have a swing of 100 or 200 buy-ins. Um, so $50,000 is really not that much, actually. Um, okay, we're going to kick him out or not on the night on B4. If we play E4, we transpose directly to a Petrosian variation where the knight is on B4. And we gain a tempo with a3. We probably end up directly in Petrosian variation. Um, a3, knight, a6, e4. And then a4 is not possible. I think this is a direct transposition. Not necessarily what I wanted to do, but I'm getting low on time. lost lost on the lost on the ears um king midas has donkey's ears knight a6 is an old greek The old Greek folk tale about King Midas. Um, e4 here. Let's focus on chess, shall we? We're going to be streaming for another 45 minutes. And 
looks like we've got a direct transposition to the Petrosian. A4 is not possible. Um, so the standard plan here for black is h5 with the idea of queen e8 and knight h7. There are different move orders. He needs to break the pin. Um, there, there are other plans, I guess, for black. Like, he doesn't have g5 available here. Um, knight c5, b4 is good for white. So I, I don't think he has a real wide variety of choices. Queen e8, h5. Queen e8 now, threatening a4. Direct transposition to mainline Petrosian system. I think the tempos are even right here. Um, this is like Kramnik versus Kasparov from the late 90s. What do you prefer against d4 as black? Do you prefer... Uh -huh. I played the King's Indian and the Nimzo primarily. Um, I would like to in incorporate a third defense against d4 because I feel like it's not enough to have just two defenses. It's, it's too easy for a professional to prepare against two defenses, whereas like three is kind of a headache. So I think that ultimately, um, I need I need one more. I need one more um, line to play. Now rook b1, queen c2. Maybe I'm supposed to play queen c2 instead. I hope my tempos are right here because if if I'm like a tempo down, I could I could be in trouble. Well, it depends on what he does actually. Um maybe queen c2. So f5. I think that the main line is actually h5 here. So f5 is F5 is different. I'm not sure I like F5 as much. It's not a classical King's Indian. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess this is a line too. But I prefer H5. He's like pretending it's the classical King's Indian, but it's not. Definitely not. Um, he doesn't have the, the same power of attack that he would have in, in the classical King's Indian. It looks like he's already folding up his tent on the queen side. Knight b5. I can also play c5 as a sort of pawn sacrifice. Certainly reasonable. I'm running out of time. Feels weird to play c5 right away, though. But for lack of, of a better plan, we'll do it. Maybe a temporary pawn sacrifice. Bishop takes a6. Not really. I don't think this double pawn should matter very much, should it? The fact that he's up a double pawn. Always has more time than me. Um, like most of you. But I don't think the standard attack on the king side here is 
is necessarily best h5 instead of f5 with the idea of bishop h6 that's activating the bad bishop you know and playing more positionally rather than trying for this classical king's indian attack and i think that now c6 is c6 is worth considering there are a lot of moves i could play but we are running out of time All right. Um, positional sacrifice. He's trying to play like it's a classical King's Indian. He did the exact normal plan from the classical, but this is not the same position. Whoa. I ought to have some sort of threats. Some sort of threats around here. I think knight c4 was a pretty dumb move, actually. Could have just played d6. because it's still in the air. I'm sure I missed a lot of stuff. This was probably a bad move by me. I might still be winning, but it wasn't exactly well played. Checkmate at his rook at the end, but was very badly played by both sides, probably in the time pressure. I'm sure that both sides made a lot of mistakes. That's why I don't play bullet chess. I wouldn't want to see like how many sent upon, how many sent upon loss the average game has. Um, you're just playing a game that's like filled with mistakes, you know. It seems to me like the object is to play with no mistakes, you know. So even in blitz, we can barely get close to that kind of quality of, of game um, but strategically black I think played too much like it was a normal classical Kings Indian 
though he had he had chances um I think that's the takeaway from that game you know black didn't really adapt to the different formation trying to do like rook f7 bishop f8 type of thing it's not really usual against uh, that setup Kyria Kospes, I've forgotten to do a weird Wednesday <laughs> um, the last game too I played like it was normal chess nobody said anything um, we're um, we're forgetting that it's weird Wednesday so we've got to play something unusual here okay why didn't anybody remind me or maybe they did um, why rook b7 why not rook a1 I just had seven seconds per move. <laughs> That's the only reason. I mean, I probably would have, I probably would have, uh, would have found the best moves if I had more time. So we'll try something experimental here. That's why I call it Weird Wednesday. I'm supposed to be playing unusual openings, but last game I forgot. <laughs> Um, anyway, it was a good game. So there, I mean, the big question is, should black play knight e4 here, obviously? Knight e4, and, um, in that case, I play bishop b2. Knight takes c3, bishop takes c3, bishop takes c3, d takes c. Would white's bizarre pawn formation, you know, be compensated by the fact that Black's traded off his Fianchetto bishop and stuff. Kind of a tough call. Anyway, back to the game. This double Fianchetto, which is one thing I would consider, is kind of a popular system. Can you let me chat in your study? I'm going to make you an offer of 100%. He loves offers. I never met anyone who loved offers so much. He likes to make deals and offers. Bishop g2. Make an offer 100% legit. How much would you uh, charge? If we could play 100 3 plus 0 rated blitz games, like 20 per day over a 5 day period. You get to stream it as well. Well, that's not really like a bonus, man. I mean, <laughs> you're making me do more work if I stream it. If I don't stream it, then it it would be it would be much easier. I mean, I could stream it, but I probably wouldn't really, you know, doing the the chat while I'm playing probably wouldn't help my result. Um, yeah, I prefer to do do something like that without streaming it. The three O games. I mean, I don't see any point in in streaming those. I don't have time to do commentary, so. People just watch the expression on my face while I struggle not to lose on time. D3, not a really aggressive setup for white, but I don't really like queen c7, and, and this seems very passive to me. In general, in the King's Indian, I think the queen belongs on e7 more often than it does on c7. The c7 square tends to be like on the queen side, it's kind of like white's territory. This is an English opening technically now. Um, so placing the queen here seems not good. I mean, it's not like it's losing or something. Just I don't think that's the best square for the queen. On the other hand, b5, I guess getting our rook off the long diagonal has something to be set for it. Ideally, something like queen b3, rook fc1, opposite is queen, would be like probably how my pieces should be configured. Getting my rook off the long diagonal with a bishop on g7. DST, I would consider that kind of offer, but I'm not going to give you an answer right now. My USCF is zero. Um, USCF ratings. 
USCF does a really bogus thing. They, um, this all started with like Fabiano Caro's dad, Caruana, Fabiano Caro. I was playing in a tournament in, in Hungary, like around 2005 when I played Caruana and Caruana's dad like insisted that, that the tournaments that, that Fabiano played in when he was still American Federation before he moved to Italy, he was insisting that the tournaments be rated U.S. You know, these tournaments were playing in like Hungary and um, I don't know, they decided to make these tournaments count, you know, international tournaments count toward USCF rating. It's like the most bogus thing I've ever heard of. You have people with no ratings and you're like rating, rating people based on their FIDE ratings, USCF. I mean, FIDE ratings are much more, much less inflated than USCF typically. So US Chess Federation rating foreign tournaments <laughs> for USCF ratings is so insane. It's like, I lost maybe, I lost maybe probably like 40 rating points due to that. 40 US rating points due to them like bogusly rating my, my FIDE foreign tournaments under USCF ratings. It's just another corrupt organization. Bishop E6, now you played Knight F8 and then Bishop E6. But now your Knight has nowhere to go. So, well, I mean, I, I don't mean to criticize because it's not like you had a lot of choices, you know, your Knight. You know, you had to move somewhere, you moved it to f8. Maybe it would be better to play like knight e6 instead of bishop e6. That's the problem when you have less space, though, boys and girls. You have less options. So this was my plan originally. To set up the pieces as such. Um, where the b-line, we've got the queen and rook. The c-line, kind of... Uh, some hidden threats along the c-file here we might have c5 or well my queen's there now but i was thinking knight d5 not quite gonna work just yet but maybe down the line we open this up he's played h6 and i was of course considering bishop h6 as a possible move but now i have knight d2 and um i can clear the uh, long diagonal for my bishop don't have to fear bishop h6. Black has played a little too hesitantly. I have knight d5. It doesn't do anything. It's one of those sacrifices with no teeth. The a7 pawn, however, seems to be an issue. So we redeploy the queen. Anyway, it was like a target for the bishop on b3. This is a better square in general. And um, we could also consider bishop a3, transferring to that diagonal with the bishop on a3. So it looks like black is in trouble positionally. This is too slow. h6, knight f8, queen c7. The bishop b6 is okay, but the rest of the pieces are... He doesn't have any counterplay, no, no counterattack. He's supposed to have like some kind of counterattack on the king's side, like f5, g5. You know, so he's, he's without that kind of counterplay. Again, bishop a3 looks good. I am a little worried. Yeah, here he's dropping c6. That's the thing I'll do. I'll, I'll talk and I'll talk and I'll like, then miss like some overt move that just like wins the exchange. Um, yeah, so we saw it. I almost played bishop a3, which would have been like horrifying. If I play bishop a3, he plays c5 and he's probably okay. White's still slightly better there, but. Sometimes I miss obvious tactics because I'm too busy like chattering about the strategic ideas in the position. Um, when you play weird openings, it turns into an English. Well, I kind of cheated on this one. I mean, it wasn't really a weird opening. I should play something more extreme. I started out with, with a normal opening, and then I played b4 to try to make it a weird opening. But it's really, it's still an English. It was really always in English. I kind of cheated. Queen takes, or bishop takes, I mean, yes, I have to take the exchange here. I don't have to. 
Actually, he can avoid losing the exchange with bishop d7. Um, I guess that's forced. Unless he wants to sacrifice the exchange. Um, which I wouldn't blame him for. And then our bishop a3, we were trying to get this in before. A bunch more relevant here. There's nothing going on on the long diagonal. The base of his pawn chain is on d6. I do have to be careful about getting mated, like knight g4 and queen h3, but even there I would have knight f1, so it's it's probably just over for black. Objectively, clear pawn down with weaknesses and a bad bishop. Knight there. Knight is pretty badly placed on b6, actually. I'm thinking like queen b5, trying to play c5. Um, I could play knight b5 right away, actually. Intermezzo. Next game, we're going to try to play something truly unusual. Back to basics, of course, you should ex consider sacrificing the exchange. I, I don't like taking such exchanges normally. Um, when I'm up a pawn, as is the case here, I would really seriously consider not taking the exchange. Um, guys, we're never going to play these challenges. I've got Zen Chess and Epithetos. Those are probably the last two for today. Um, yeah, I'm going to call it right now. These are the last two games for today. Zen Chess, Epithetos. Epithetos was... He was afraid he was going to bubble, but yesterday I Am Destroyer was the bubble. Today it will be back... No, it's a constant change. Constant change is the bubble today. No, yeah. And um, unless like one of these games is like super fast. By the way, one of my teammates is a birds opening player, Yeroon. I don't know if Yeroon's still here, but there was a very interesting game next to me on Sunday between my teammate who's like a FIDE master who's like crazy tactical and, and this really, really well-experienced Hungarian IM. It was f4, e5, pawn takes pawn, d6, pawn takes pawn, bishop takes d6, the Fromm's gambit. Um, and then like knight f3, g5, and white played d4, and g4, knight g5. I knew about knight e5, but knight g5. And like white sacrifices a piece with f5, his knight is trapped on g5. It was totally chaotic. Um, but I saw a new idea, e5 in the Fromm's Gambit. Pawn takes pawn, d6, pawn takes pawn, bishop takes d6, knight f3, g5. It's not a new idea, but a new idea to me. Like white can play c3 g4, queen a4 check, and uh, evacuate the d1 square for the white king. So I was going to recommend that to our moderator, Yeroon, if he ever plays the white side of the, the Fromm's Gambit, to try this idea of playing, accepting the Fromm's Gambit, then play c3, queen a4 check, and, and giving your king like a runaway evacuation square on d1. But since just play d6, okay, I just basically gambited two minutes. Um, yeah, we had a similar game last week against somebody. It sort of stops b3 because there's this queen f6 idea which would like fork f4 and the a1 rook. Playing b6 here, why not? What about the symmetrical Dutch? F4, F5. <laughs> I remember when I was like, in my one of my first tournaments, one of my friends played that. We were laughing at him because he thought it was like the symmetrical English, you know, like F4, F5. Um, anyway. The piece sacrifices a known theoretical line. Played it once with white, very interesting. Yeah, Saronche, I thought, I didn't realize it was like a really like analyzed thing and I, I didn't know that my like my my teammate was playing something that was known 
I know that 95 is not that great for white. At least that was my impression. But very fascinating, Jeroen. Did you know about C3? I would look into that. That looks like white might be able to get an advantage. I was looking at it. Um, I was looking at it yesterday with, with Stockfish, and it appears that C3 might be a good move. Um, there is like one or there are like one or two games where that's been played. So anyway, Zen Chess with a hyper modern answer to the to the birds opening, which seems very reasonable to me. So not really a birds aficionado, bird addict. Our our moderator here, self proclaimed bird addict. Um, I can certainly castle. Looks like the normal thing to do. I mean, he could go ballistic with h5, but I don't think that that's really fitting in with this quiet bishop e7, knight f66 type of formation. He'll play more positionally. Um... We can transpose to various things like uh, Dutch reversed, or if he plays d5, or the Sicilian, closed Sicilian. I guess if you play f4, you, you kind of have to be prepared to play against the closed Sicilian, no matter what. It is kind of frustrating to play against this non-committal setup that Zen Chess has played. I feel like the onus is on me to do something, but um, there's really not that much to do. F4, F5, E4. <laughs> oh God, the inverted King's Gambit. Um, Man, there's nothing I can do but transpose to some kind of line of a closed Sicilian or Dutch. This is the moment of truth. We get to see whether he is intending to play c5 or d5. Of course, he can play both. Now, a little bit like a King's Indian, these kind of positions. e4, pawn takes pawn, knight g5. I would assume, right? I have no idea what what the theoretical um, opinion is about this kind of position. My instinct tells me that black is equal here. And I better be careful not to be worse. I mean, e4 isn't forced for white. I guess you could play more Creepy crawly. Creepy crawly kind of set up with maybe e3, but it looks kind of lame. Um, taking the bulls by the horn. The bulls by the horn. The multiple bull bulls with one horn. Um, guys, please check out my YouTube channel. I do upload all the videos there. Video chess training on YouTube. King's Indian theme here. The Dutch and the King's Indian certainly have some relation, and um, this pawn sacrifice, well, sham sacrifice, temporary sacrifice theme crops up a lot. It's almost like he's playing like um, B3 against the King's Indian or something. I'm playing the King's Indian, I played F5. But I like this pawn structure for black. Um, white's a little more like overextended and has some weaknesses around the king so on the plus side black's got a kind of modest piece development so there's really not that much he can do to me you know throwing a bishop out the c5 check for example 
maybe not correct because it doesn't have he doesn't have any follow up you know um but when i talk about the pawn structure what i mean is white is a little bit kind of backward along the d file you know and i think um without stuttering too much if i try to explain it it's kind of like well if he gets in c5 you know he can have a lever with c4 of course, I have counterplay on the king side with f5 as well. So I guess this can go both ways. But um, knight bd7 is interesting. Using possibly c5 for the pieces. So he keeps the square free for his pieces rather than occupy it with a c-pawn. Knight takes e4. I mean, any kind of inner mezzos. He's prepared to play knight c5, yes. I guess so. Um, inner, inner mezzos, like the f5 break. I'm not even that well developed here. You know, I don't think I can, can do anything like that. I think it's just equal. I mean, I don't think there's anything really um, either side has spectacularly. I would evaluate this as about equal. Although I like black's pawn structure in the sense that white is a little backward along the D file. And I think that's more relevant than like my E file. I was kind of um, paralyzed for a moment. Surprised by this move, knight C5, though it may be quite good. It wasn't what I had expected him to simplify, so. It's a bit strange. A bit surprising. Maybe he'll let me have bishop takes b7, fianchettoing his, his bishop there. There's also queen h5 type of move that could weaken his king side. <clears throat> I don't see anything fancy, so... <sighs> Here we go. Um... No tactics, per se. If only my queen was on e2. Even that wouldn't be that clear. Um, I don't see any tactics for white. He's played very solidly. We can weaken his king side by making him play h6. Or bishop takes g5. That's the only thing I can do. Nezmedinov. <laughs> he liked to play the king's Indian attack and stuff like this. He wasn't afraid of this weakness of the d4 square so much. I guess it's okay for white. Just not I'm not I'm not typically playing this kind of closed Sicilian. This is very imbalanced if he plays bishop takes g5. I think you ruined would like it though. It brings back memories of our simul game from Sunday where I had like a good knight that was supposed to be good against the same bad bishop. <laughs> but my knight just couldn't get to where it needed to be and uh, I was basically lost with, with black white square knight against dark squared bishop in a dutch. Something similar. But it could be dangerous for black to trade. You know, bishop takes g5, f takes g5. There's always like the brute force, rook f4, rook h4, try to mate him on h7 type of thing. But more generally, um, his knight is having trouble. Maybe he can get to d6 and f5. But again, there it's not like a permanent outpost either. It's a bit tricky. Queen d4 check surprising me. Now I play king g2. Oh, I see. So he wants to play queen d5 in some positions, maybe. Well, I don't know what choices I really have. I don't want to pin myself. 
I was thinking of hiding my king on h3, actually. But here I can't do it. He's got h6. He's got h6. That's the, the rub. That's his whole idea. So, I don't see how I can sacrifice a piece here. I have to play this. I don't, I don't know, I don't have any advantage. Um, everyone's in silent, silent wonder at Black's ingenious defense of queen, queen d4 check, followed by queen d5. I guess I should have played rook f2 in retrospect. Thinking outside the box a little bit here. Still, I think black has adequate, black would have adequate resources. As it stands now, approximately equal would be my evalu evaluation. Oh man, I just thought of something really bad. You guys see the Gibraltar tournament? This young lady, Pop Petra, did the most unbelievable thing against Ivanchuk. Did she lose finally? Does anybody know? Because it was unreal. Like, she had a forced king and pawn endgame with dead symmetrical pawns and didn't do it against Ivanchuk. The guy's 2700. You're 2300. You can trade the last pieces to reach a symmetrical king and pawn endgame, and you don't trade and then get outplayed in a bishop endgame and lose. Now, that's, that's unbelievable, man. I mean, Ivanchuk just handed her a draw on a silver platter, and she didn't take it. <laughs> I felt kind of really sorry for her. I mean, that is ridiculous, though. Um, I decided to be aggressive here. Do you guys see that? Maybe not. It wasn't like an important game, but it was Ivanchuk. You know, it's always entertaining to watch Ivanchuk. But Ivanchuk, first of all, I don't know, maybe he can't play against girls or something, but... First thing he did was like play the Petrov against someone rated 400 points lower, okay? Now I realize that Ivancha can play any opening, but you know, realistically, Chucky, I mean, is it a good idea playing for a win against someone 400 points lower with a Petrov? Then he goes into like this totally symmetrical position and even allows her to like trade off the last pieces to a dead draw king and pawn in game. But I guess her confidence in her technique in the dead draw and king and pawn in game wasn't so high so she decided just to be safe to keep the keep the bishops on the board and then get outplayed in an equal position you know and this is ridiculous man i mean and this is a girl who has like hungarian trainers and she should know how to play endings um it's pretty sad now the position is getting kind of dynamic knight g5 what to do. I don't know what to do here. I don't even know who's better. It's kind of dynamic. Opposite side, pawn majorities. I wouldn't trust Pop Petro this ending, though. That is so sad. Like, Ivancha gives you a draw on a silver platter and you don't take it. No, you want to play like a bishop ending where there's a small chance you can go wrong and lose. Instead of the guaranteed draw, I would, like, kill myself if I was her. It's, it's ridiculous, really. Um, now look at look at Zen Chess with this move. Wow. He's playing so well here. Positionally. Another good move, of course. Now I'm like groveling for a draw. Well, I better trade that bishop off. I know Pet Petra wouldn't agree, but it looks like a good bishop to me. Maybe black's a little bit better here.
Oh. Well, he sure is fast. Guys, I have time for one more game. Okay, Zenchess was friendly enough to take the draw here. I think black is a tiny bit better. After pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, it's probably a draw. But um, black would be justified trying to torture me a little bit here. Though I think this is a draw. Um, last game, we lost our other challenger, Apathetos. No, he's back. 5-5. Five, five. Okay. What happened? Did Petra lose? It's so sick. I mean, she's sitting there and can trade the last bishop and queen off into an absolutely symmetrical, totally drawn position and doesn't do it. It's like, I don't imagine how you can be 2300. What was she doing? Like playing for a win? I mean, one of those mysteries that like should go down in history. But last year, um, another Hungarian phenom Beat, uh, beat Anand in one of the first rounds. Benjamin Gladora. Quite a few Hungarian players there. Um, they seem to like the Gibraltar tournament. Epithetos, are you here? You re-challenged me, and now you're not moving. Now, Nakamura's game was interesting, but I haven't had enough time to really... Um, haven't had enough time to really analyze it. Epithetos is not moving. I only have time for, for a five, five minute game, guys. So if somebody wants to challenge me to five, constant change, if you want to challenge me to five, three, I would, I would play that because I don't think Apathetos is here. But I don't have time to play another um, long game Fabunko, I think that Gladys Troll just posted it there. It's the sickest thing I've ever seen. Like, you're 2300 and you can't know, like, it's a drawn king and pawn end game. You're afraid to do that. And then, uh, and then she even went, went on to, like, lose a drawn bishop end game. She was a tiny, tiny bit worse because one of her pawns was on a dark square. But the position is a total draw. I mean, she really had to go out of her way to lose. It was sort of sick. But Ivanchuk, for his part, like, he just gives her a draw and, like, tortures himself with this, like, 80-move game to try to win a draw position. And why not just play, like, a normal opening instead of the Petrov in the first place? Um, anyway. All right, we have a new challenge. CH Legends challenged me to 3-5. Constant Change was next in line, so I'm going to give it to him. Yes, I'm going to leave the page. We're going to play Constant Change. Epithetus, I don't know what happened. I mean, he, he was the bubble. He, he got past the bubble, but he, he wasn't here for his game. Unusual openings. Um, yeah, let, let's play the, the favorite, St. George. So I feel sorry, but I don't understand how you can be, you know, trained since, since birth as like a junior player and, and not... It's just maybe some kind of magic spell or something, you know. How do you not, like, have confidence in your king and pawn in game skills? Um, it's the most fundamental of, of all positions. <laughs> it's just laughable. Um, how could someone not... How could someone not trade the last pieces into a symmetrical king and pawn end game? It's like a W, she might even be like a WGM. Um, 
I, I wouldn't be able to sleep for, for a month if I, if I let that happen. Oh my god. How often do you get to like get a draw against a legendary player like Ivanchuk? C3... I guess we were here earlier against Constant Change. We had the same game once before. She was experiencing some lag, dude. I have the feeling that it might have been something to do with playing a woman. I mean, obviously, Ivanchuk has played women before, though, you know? Um, so, it's hard to believe he, like, freezes up at the sight of a woman and can't play chess anymore. Although, he doesn't play very many of them. At his level, um, that's hardly an explanation, you know? Maybe he was just trying to be nice and give her a draw, but then, like, when she couldn't imagine how to to accept like this king and pawn end game that was a total draw he was like oh man i tried to give you a draw but now it's like too embarrassing i've got to beat you so he was trying to be a gentleman and give her a draw but she didn't want it so then it was like reached the point of like being embarrassing <laughs> ivanchuk had to like just beat her um his reputation was on the line so now rookie one yeah i'm thinking that the earlier game against constant change it might have been a slightly different position. Because that might have been an Owen defense. I'm thinking I had like knight b4 and bishop a6 in that game. And here I have the pawn on a6 and b5. So, um, queen b6. What typically happens is white gets a good game by playing like d5, knight e7, and then c4. So I think I should take, I should think about taking on d4 maybe, or d5, d4, whatever that is. Anyway, guys, I'm a little bit, a little bit sleepy. Um, it's been a long stream, so take it easy on I me mean, if I say something stupid. Pawn takes pawn. Yeah, I mean, this should be fine for black, really. We have queen b6. That looks okay. There's knight b4. He's sort of threatening d5. Sort of threatening. Maybe concretely threatening d5. So maybe we'll do the... Tony M's recommendation. Wait hasn't played a3, though. That's the thing that's bugging me about this position. He hasn't played a3, but eventually he's going to have to play it. Then we can transpose to, to Tony M, theory. Now I'm threatening knight b4 and queen c7, which is really serious. Um, this happened to constant change the other day with colors reversed in a similar structure. And I just don't think that white can allow knight b4 here. a3 is certainly the best move. Um, yeah, he wasn't thinking when he chose the Petrov, I guess. Or maybe she had played other lines or something and then switched up on him. But it wasn't like... And then he did another weird thing. I mean... In the line that she played, the Nimzovich variation with knight c3, which is what everybody plays. Every five-year-old child knows how to play the Nimzovich variation, like until move 15 with a, at least an equal position for white. Um, I, uh, I, you know, Ivancha castled kingside, which is... Usually they castle queenside with black lately. But maybe I, I need to look at the game a little bit in more depth, because I just went over it kind of quickly. I mean, I guess castling kingside is okay. Anyway, just playing the Petrov against someone 400 rating points higher is a dumb thing to do. Yeah, he's known for doing weird things. I think he just chooses his openings at random. He has like 10 openings with with both, you know, colors and against everything. He probably has like the broadest opening repertoire of anyone um, close to 2700. Knight b4. You didn't listen to me. Well, you want to control b4 with the e3. Knight e3. I 
asking for trouble. Knight b4, bishop b1. Sometimes there's stuff like rook takes c1, but I don't have it here. Queen c7 with the idea of knight c2, and then you can pin me. You can't pin me. Knight b4, right. This ought to be good. Constant change let me do the same theme to him the other day in a similar position. I mean, he can give up the bishop, but it's not really what you want to do. Um, so... Queen c7 is next. No secrets about that with the threat of knight e3, and I don't think that white has a good a good answer. Okay, a3, well, playable, but I've got this valuable unopposed, whoops, valuable unopposed white square bishop, which gives black a pretty good game. So that's that. Queen c7. Can't play knight e3 because of e4. Guys, this is the last game for today. We'll be back tomorrow with uh, more classical chess and blitz. Normal stream with normal openings. A lot of experimental stuff today. Although I did midstream, I forgot we were playing Weird Wednesday, and I started to, I started to revert to my normal English opening. Um, I rush said it's such bad end game play by the WGM. I mean, I guess she got nervous. You know, it's intimidating to play someone who's that famous. Um, but I wouldn't think after the way he played the first forty moves, I would still be intimidated. You know, I mean, it looks like he's just being a gentleman and giving a draw for some reason. I, I don't know why. You know, um, maybe he's looking for a wife or something. I don't know, man. But he didn't seem interested in trying to win for the first forty moves of the game, and only seemed interested like. When she declined the, the drawn king and pawn endgame and, and reached this bishop endgame that should still be a draw. I don't know, man. I never played her, um, but I would guess that uh, she has trainers who are typically like... The Hungarian trainers are very, very specialist in openings, so... Her endgame technique might not be up to snuff, but I'm sure her opening preparation is first class. And now we have an interesting move, knight g3. So he's passing on that, passing on that possibility of playing um, knight e3, obviously, because of the, the e4 pawn. And here we have to be a little bit careful. There is an issue. I could play d5. And stick a knight on e4. Convincingly. Um, but there is a possibility that that guy could get stuck. Though I don't really see how that would happen. d6 is also okay, but white's catching up in development now. Queen c2 is the problem h5 interesting move I'm gonna default here the simplest solution um, we could also play knight d7 but that's really passive I mean e5 knight d7 but it's very passive we do close down our bishop though this is not my first choice but I'm running out of time I'm about to lose on time so I wanted to choose something forcing white might still be better here after this move, maybe again, though, knight d7 is not such a stupid idea in this exact situation. e5, knight d7, like a French. Knight e4, I'm a little concerned it gets trapped because he has f3 at some point. Some bizarre plan like. Well, I don't see how it would actually go down, though, come to think of it. Um, knight h5. I'm about to lose on time, so... <laughs> Q 
keeping an eye on the B2 pawn. Yeah, this is kind of what I figured. But that's what the diagonal I wanted for my queen. If necessary, I'll retreat back to h7. One of my favorite squares lately. Lost a simul game like that on Sunday. It's a great hiding square. We have good white square control. Oh, knight h5. But he loses a piece here. Okay, guys, thank you for the game. Constant change. Play a3. I don't see any reason to allow my knight to go to b4. Okay, guys, we'll be back tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in. Do check out my YouTube channel, Video Chess Training on YouTube. And um, there I upload all the streams. I also do like weekly like videos about uh, maybe replays of uh, games or simuls I played here. Also independent analysis of different stuff. Last week I put up a game from the Chorus B tournament. Maybe I'll do that too. I don't know yet. We'll see what happens. Maybe Thursday, Friday, I'll put it up. Um, we will... Uh, no time to play. I have a lot of, a lot of work now. So, Epitheto, sorry about that. Maybe next time. We will be back tomorrow, 10 a.m. CET. And um, lastly, but not leastly, if you want to contact me for training or any kind of questions or suggestions about the stream, please feel free to contribute. Um, my email is videochesstrainer at gmail.com. And lastly, before I'm out of breath, I just wanted to say that I thank those of you who've donated via PayPal. It, it is really appreciated and helps me a lot. So thanks again. And I do encourage everyone to, uh, to contribute even just a small donation of like $5 a year to the YouTube channel, to the stream. It helps a lot. Thank you, guys. And if you can't, just, just hang out and support the stream by taking part. Again, sorry, Epithetos, but I have to go have a lot of stuff to do. I have to record a video and have several lessons today. So I will be back tomorrow, 10 a.m. CET. See you then. Bye-bye.